I've built three different bunkers, all based on the same floor plan. This project started with some research in a sketchbook, trying to figure out how big the game's workshop bunkers are, looking at some real life bunkers, playing around with different ideas. I set about building a couple of test models, and in that process it became very clear that I wanted to include what Games Workshop considers the next steps from my Elite Box Set manual. I'm going to show you how to make one and stick around because I'll tell you where you can get templates to make your own. After spending some quality time with my test models, my ruler and my computer, it was time to start printing. Now we've got the printouts, we need some 5mm foam board. These were stuck together using a glue stick and cut out using a couple of very sharp knives. Now we've got all the pieces, we can start putting them together. We've got a glue gun, some PVA glue, which I keep in this little red pot, some masking tape, some hosiery pins, and a good quality steel ruler. We're going to start with the base and the front wall. This front wall is all in one piece. You'll notice some lines in the template and what we're going to do is use the ruler just to bend the foam exactly where those lines are. But watch out because one of these bends does go in the opposite direction because of the way the wall is designed. We're bending the foam instead of cutting out all these individual sections because it'll actually give us a much stronger structure to the building as a whole. After a quick dry fit, we can start gluing the front wall to the base. The PVA and the pins are going to do the bulk of this work for us, but where it's a little bit more tricky, we might want some instant contact glue. We'll use hot glue to seal certain parts of it in place almost immediately and then we can let the PVA glue over time dry and do all the real work. Once that's done, we can start on the servo turret platform. The shapes in the template are pretty self-explanatory. As long as you watch the video, you'll know which shape to use. The larger of the two here, we're going to glue to the back of the base. Again, just using PVA and pins. The smaller shape we're going to use to support the servo turret platform at the front of the platform floor. Then we're going to glue the platform floor in place on the base, making sure to hold everything together with these pins from as many different angles as you possibly can so that it dries nice and securely. So far so easy. And now what we need to do is fit the turret wall. We're going to follow exactly the same process as we did the front wall. There's lines on the template, get your ruler out, bend the bits you need to bend, a quick dry fit, there's a little adjustment to do on this piece, and then glue it in place. Because this turret wall actually sits on two different levels, we just need to take a quick measurement of this part of the base, so that we can then cut out a section in the center of this wall, so that it will sit nicely and snugly in the base and wrap around the turret platform. A quick dry fit just to make sure we've got the cuts right. And we can get to gluing again. The last job for this section of the build is just to add the roof in. Very simple. Slap the sides with glue, stick it in, pin it in, leave it to dry overnight. Once you've cut all the pieces of the template out from the foam board, this part of the build really shouldn't take you any longer than 15-20 minutes. If you're building either of these two bunkers, this wraparound section is clearly much smaller than on the bunker with a turret. Their templates reflect that, and the way I've designed this is you need to bend the center two markings on the template with the ruler. Then on the next two set of lines, we're actually just gonna cut a 45 degree angle into the foam.
you can see how it fits the bend now. And from the leftover piece that we've just cut off, there's a five millimeter section that you need to cut. And you can use to butt up to the 45 degree angle you've just cut to fill the gap nicely. It's quick, it's an easy fix. And if you're building this bunker with the exposed servo turret on the back, on that template, you will find two perfectly sized pieces just to fill these two gaps on the back. This guy has had some time to set up and dry and you'll see I've added one of the internal columns to help support the roof and the two entrances on the back of the bunker. These pieces are of course on the template. Now if you want the roof to stay fixed on this bunker, now is the time to glue it in. Just fit it in, pin it, glue it, but you will have to add the other column on the front of the bunker just to help support it a bit more. These bunkers are designed for the roof to come off to give you access to the five, let's just say Space Marines, you've got hidden in this bunker. So for the convertible version, you will need to adjust the roof piece ever so slightly, but the next step is to put this section into the bunker because this is what's going to support the roof when it's actually in place. So we're all set up with our glues, we're ready to finish this build. But the first thing to do is add a, a mark four and a half centimeters from the internal floor up the wall because that's where our support structure is actually going to sit. You can do a quick dry fit if you like, but it's really not necessary. It will fit and it's just a case of slapping the glue where it needs to go, fitting it into place and making sure it's all pinned. I did mention about internal columns earlier and now we need this piece and this is going to fit against this wall to help support the support for the roof. Then very carefully we're going to add a couple of extra pins and we can turn our attention to the front support. Again a little bit of glue, a little bit of finesse and then pinning in place. Once you've pinned it in place, you can finish gluing the front wall to the roof support, get that all pinned in, and you should end up with something that looks like this. Let it dry, then it's on to the next step. I've added some buttresses onto mine. These aren't on the template, but I do want to encourage you, if you're gonna make any one of these bunkers, please customize them. You can find me on Instagram, Tag me in a picture, I wanna see them. I wanna know what you're gonna make out of them. I've now covered this thing in filler, known as spackle in some parts of the world for God knows what reason. This does two things for me. It fills in some of the gaps and it's the start of adding texture to this model. Then I spent what felt like days sanding this thing down. I may have added a little bit too much filler. I did have to knock some of it back a little bit, but I don't really mind. I also wanted to round all the sharp edges so it looked like it had been weathered, it had been eroded. I didn't want anything sharp on this at all. Then once I spent hours doing that, I actually covered it in a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint, only to start hacking away at it, destroying all the good work that we put in so far. But battle damage is a thing, right? And I want this thing to look like it's been around for ages. Now, you may notice some pieces of cocktail stick. You can, if you want, add cocktail sticks to strengthen it. It's not necessary. I did add them because my bunkers are supposed to be made out of concrete. I wanted the opportunity to add little pieces of rebar and expose them at this stage. This next step, I stole from MS Paints with some PVA glue, some flour and a sieve. That's right, it's gonna get messy. I want to keep some of the plaster texture because if you ever poured concrete, you'll know it doesn't pour flat and I like some of that larger texture. But at this scale, having the whole building with that rougher texture is too much. Using the flour gives you a much finer grain. On bunker number two, I actually used sand. It was just way too coarse. After it dried, it got sprayed with isopropyl alcohol and some watered down PVA glue. Then straight out of a can, it got hit with a black primer coat. Then a top down gray to give us our base color ready for painting. 
after covering the entire bunker in Army Painter Dark Tone Wash. It was just a series of dry brushes to bring out some of the highlights and as this was the fourth bunker I'd made for this video, it was only right I got a quick stencil. And we ended up with bunker number one, which was just a test model. Bunker number two, which designed to hold a squad of 10. Bunker number three, designed to hold five squad members and a fire strike servo turret. And bunker number four, which we shall get some glamour shots of right now. We've managed to make it all the way through the video without saying the word shooting hole. I'm thankful for that. If you have enjoyed the video, if you like the bunkers, you know what to do by now. The thing I enjoy the most is when you leave me a comment though. I do read all the comments. Let me know what you think of the bunkers. You can see here on bunker number two, the texture is a lot more coarse. That's the one that I actually did the sand on. It's a little too coarse for my taste. And if you are wondering why the bunker number two has steps instead of ladders, well, if you have to use ladders, you must let go of your bolter. Thanks for watching.